Hi, I wanted to do, do a couple of examples of voltage divider and current divider. I noticed from having office hours, I didn't quite have enough examples in the previous videos. So I wanna show some somewhat complex examples when you have to do voltage divider and current divider, possibly multiple times to find an unknown voltage or an unknown current. So I'm gonna start by looking at this circuit here. We have actually, yeah, so we have, um, it's a moderately complex circuit. We have a known 70 volts across this system. And I, my question is, what's the voltage across this five here? So I want to know, what's the voltage across this five ohm resistor? Now, I'm, I have a known voltage, 70 volts. I want to know this voltage, five, uh, the voltage across the five ohm resistor. So a voltage divider is probably a good tool to do this. So my question is, how do I start to apply voltage divider to this circuit? Well, one thing to notice is we have two separate parts to this circuit. We have this, this here, and we have this over here. And it should be noted that there's 70 volts across each of these. So I have 70 volts across here and I have 70 volts across here. I mean, that's what, that's what the 70 volt supply being connected to this node and the 70 volt supply being connected to this node is. I know there's 70 volts across each of these parts of the circuit. So for the purposes of voltage divider, I don't really worry about this. I don't care what's going on over here. If all I'm looking for is the voltage across something on this part of the circuit, well, it doesn't really matter to me what's going on over on the other side. And so, I mean, I know there's 70 volts across it and I could solve for the voltages over there, but I'm not worried about it. So I can kind of ignore it. So when you're doing voltage divider, voltage divider is designed to find unknown voltages for series connected resistors. So things that are in parallel, so this, this part here is in parallel with this part here. Things in parallel are fairly boring with voltage because the voltage across things in parallel is the same. So they, every, every little parallel chunk has the same voltage across it. So I don't worry too much about that. And I can't undo that, so that's fine. So let's look at, let's go, get back to the problem at hand. So one thing might be, why can't I just apply voltage divider here? Well, the reason I can't apply voltage divider there is because these resistors are not in series. So two of them are, the five and the 25 are in series, but there's this pesky little wire here. So basically, this is not a collection of components that are in series. This is, uh, the, the, you, we can't treat them separately with a voltage divider equation. So we have to look at essentially this whole, this whole mess over here. And what you'll notice is this wire basically means that this shares a node, which means that these two resistors are in parallel and these two resistors are in series, but this series combination is in parallel with this resistor over here. Okay, so, that, so recognizing that is gonna help us kind of analyze this, but getting back to it, we know that there's 70 volts across this entire thing. So let's, let's do it. Let's combine this top part and this bottom part. So the top part, we have a 60 in parallel with a 30. That's gonna be 20 ohms. So I'm just gonna redraw this just really quickly. And then over here, we have a five in series with a 25. It's gonna be 30. And that is in parallel with a 20. And that's going to equal 12. Okay, so I have an equivalent circuit here that's like this. And I know that there is 70 volts across this thing. So if I'm looking for the five, the voltage across the five, the five was part of this 12. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use voltage divider to find, because now I can do voltage divider. Now I have a known voltage across a collection of series resistors. It's the equivalent resistors in series, but it's still resistors in series. So I can find the voltage across this 12, and I can say V12 is equal to 70 times 12 divided by 12 plus 20. That equals 
Okay, and that equals twenty six point two five. Okay. So twenty six point two five volts is the voltage across this twelve. And now we can zoom in on that 12. So what does that mean? So un unfolding that 12, what, what does it mean? We have 26.25 volts across this looking thing here. So I know I have 26.25 volts across this whole mess here. So my question is, do I care necessarily that I had a 20 ohm resistor here, right? Do I care about this? If I'm trying to find the voltage across the five, does that 20 matter? Well, it mattered in the sense that we needed it to find this resistance to find the voltage across all of this in the first place. But now that we know that voltage, if we're just trying to find the voltage across the five, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just, just the same way that this part of the circuit over here didn't matter for the analysis of the other side, now this 20 doesn't matter. And it doesn't mean it doesn't impact the circuit. It means it doesn't matter at this point, in our, at this step in our analysis. We know the voltage across the 20. We know the voltage across the five and 25. So now all we're worried about is this five and 25 in series with a known voltage 26.25 across it. So we can just apply voltage divider to, we don't apply voltage divider to parallel connections. We apply it to series connections. This is our series connection. So the last step to find the voltage across the five, that's gonna be, 26.25 times five divided by five plus 25, and that equals 4.375. So that's the voltage across the five ohm resistor. So hope that helped going through that beginning to end that process through a slightly more complicated voltage divider circuit. But the biggest thing is when you're using voltage divider, you really want to identify what is my collection of resistors in series? Do I actually have a known voltage across a collection of resistors or equivalent resistors in series? Once you do, you can solve for the voltage across one of those. And then if, the, if one of those resistors was an equivalent resistor, you can sort of go back and now you say, okay, now I have this known voltage across this subset of resistors. What do I do now? How can I apply voltage divider again or something, some other technique again to find, to find my unknown? Okay, let's go on to this circuit here. So now we have uh, current. So my question now is what's this current through this 60K? I have a known current flowing through this circuit and I wanna know what current is through the 60K. And the first thing to notice is that in this circuit, I have a 5K in series with this mess in series with this 2K. Now, when I have a known current through things in series, what do I do? Well, known currents through things in series are kind of boring because the current through each element in series is the same. So I have 100 milliamps flowing into this 5K and I have 100 milliamps flowing out. And I have 100 milliamps flowing into here and I have 100 milliamps flowing out. It's, it's fairly boring. Where we care about current is when current is able to split apart. So here, where current is able to split between these three parallel pathways, that's what I care about. That's where I want to apply a current divider. So in this problem, I have this known current flowing through a bunch of stuff in series, but it's only that thing in series that branches off into a bunch of different, you know, where it allows current to split off into these different pathways. That's the only place I want to apply current divider. So that's the only element of the circuit that I use the current divider. And a lot of times what messes people up is finding this equivalent resistance, right? When they, when they, we use REQ all over the place to, to you know, we use it to, to represent any equivalent resistance of some collection of resistors. But when you're using voltage divider and current divider, that REQ is specifically the resistance of the collection of resistors in parallel that you're trying to find the current through one branch of, or the collection of resistors in series that you're trying to find the voltage across one particular resistor of. And so you don't wanna use the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit. You only wanna use the equivalent resistance of that portion of the circuit to which you're applying current divider or voltage divider.
Okay, so knowing that, let's jump into this. So we, so we can basically kind of simplify this as saying we have a known 100 milliamps flowing into this collection of resistors like this. And this is going to be our current divider. But we can't quite apply current divider yet because we have to get this into an equivalent resistance. So to do that, looking at this portion of the circuit, we have a 60 in parallel with a 90. And that's 36. And then that is in series with a 14, so it's plus 14, which equals 50. So effectively, we have a 50, a 50, and a 100. Okay, so now let's apply current divider to this. And I'm gonna solve for the current flowing through this branch because ultimately I was trying to find the current here. So I wanna find the current flowing into that portion and then we'll deal with it after that. So let's first of all find REQ for this collection here. It's gonna be 100 in parallel with 50 in parallel with 50. That's gonna equal Okay, so now finding the current through this branch, we do uh, the current through there is going to be the total current, which is 100 milliamps, times the um, equivalent resistance, which is 20, divided by the resistance of that branch, which is 50. So this is going to be 40 milliamps. Okay, so now we know we have, uh, I'm just gonna clean some of this math up here, Let's clean this page up a little bit. So now we basically know, going back to this portion of our circuit here, that we have 40 milliamps flowing into a 14, and a 90 and a 60. And of course, these are all K, but I don't really care about that right now. So we have 40 milliamps flowing into this. So once again, the 14 now, the 14 is in series, right? Whatever current is 40 milliamps flowing into the 14 also flows out of the 14. So it's not going to factor into my next current divider equation. Um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter because it was necessary to find the equivalent resistance which, found, which, found, which determined the total current flowing into here. But now that we know this current, 40 milliamps flows into the 14, 40, 40 milliamps flows out of the 14. It's not until that current branches between this 90 and the 60 that we care about current divider. So let's apply current divider one more time. So let's say uh, we already know that a 90 in parallel with a 60 is going to be... Um, uh, what was it, 36? So, so now we can just do the current through the 60. It's going to be the total current now through that section, which is 40 milliamps, times the equivalent resistance, which was 36, divided by the resistance of the branch, which was 60. It's going to be 24. So we have 24 milliamps flowing through the 60k resistor. You know, if we want to find the power for the resistor, you know, we could just do I squared times R, right? There's lots of other stuff we could do now, but this is sort of the process of breaking a circuit into pieces, applying current divider, voltage divider multiple times to find an unknown. I wanted to just step through this whole process a couple times so you'd have some examples because I realized a lot of this was kind of left out in the previous video. So thanks for watching.